Hi everybody, um, this is Matt, um, this is my very first, um, YouTube channel video, so if I'm not good at it, I apologize, hopefully when I watch this in five years, I can, I have a massive YouTube channel, hopefully, and can edit it and change it, so this YouTube channel is going to be about my perspective on the movies I grew up with or whoever else grew up with and I'm just going to be giving my reviews and also recommending movies that I personally feel are good. Um, so the first movie I decided to um, do a uh, commentary on is the 1997 film Batman and Robin and I know this is a VHS tape it's old that proves how old I am. So yeah Batman and Robin is the sequel to um, Batman Forever um, it was released in, uh, to America in 1997. I can't remember the exact date. Um, I, myself, was born in 1998, so I didn't get the privilege to see, um, the 90s Batman movies in theaters. But I got them at thrift shops for about a dollar, um, in my childhood, so I was able to watch them. So Batman and Robin takes place after like maybe a few years after Batman Forever because Batman and Forever was came out in 95. So probably about two years after three years after. And so Batman and Robin mainly focuses on like partnership and you know Batman's dealing with he's got a partner Robin and Robin kind of wants to do stuff on his own. And Batman's like, look, if you if you don't follow my rules, you know, you're done. Like, it's my rules that keep us safe. And Robin's like, look, I want to I want to do my own thing. You know, it, it, it kind of focuses on how, like, the young partner wants to do good and wants the older one. It's kind of like a big brother, little brother situation as well, you know. The big brother's the protector of the little brother, and the little brother wants to go out on his own, and, and the older brother's like, look, it, you know, it's my rules, you know, my stuff that's keeping you alive. And so they introduce um, two new villains, um, Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy. Um, and of course, you know, Mr. Freeze, they base it off, you know, the normal thing, you know, the comic books and the animated series, you know. His wife got a very sick disease and she died or is dying, however you want to put it. And so he and he also was in an accident uh, saving his wife. So he has a suit to keep him alive. And so, you know, he's robbing banks and stealing diamonds so he can use that to bring his wife back. And so that's pretty much how the movie starts. You know, they suit up. And they're driving in the Batmobile. And, of course, Commissioner Gordon says, there's a new villain, Mr. Freeze. And while that's happening, deep in, like, an Amazon jungle somewhere is Poison Ivy. And she's, you know, wanting plants. You know, the same like in the comic book. She's all about plants. Keep the earth green um, is what I'm going to go with. Um, and so, yeah, so we have that. And there's a mad scientist there. And his name is escaping me because it's been about 20-something years since I've seen this movie. I used to watch it religiously because it was, a, in my opinion, it was a good one. Um, so he creates Bane. And while he's doing that, Poison Ivy is, like, secretly listening in. And the doctor catches her and gives her a chance to join him. And she refuses, so he pretty much, like, dumps all the chemicals and pretty much kills her um and then you know she becomes poison ivy she takes bane goes to gotham tries you know and so i'm not gonna like give like the whole story of the movie because i kind of want you know i mean most people have seen it um i just want to give my review of it so this is considered even like on rotten tomatoes imdb everyone it's considered the worst superhero movie of all time and I mean, like, honestly, in, in, in retrospect, looking back on it, like, it's not the best out of the original four Batman movies. 
Um, I have a few friends that have said Batman and Robin over Batman Forever. Um, and I have to... I have to strongly disagree because Batman Forever was more truth. It was more focusing on why, you know, it's focusing on Batman, why he's Batman. And so, like, I mean, the soundtrack to this movie is, is phenomenal. You know, we got R.E.M., Smashing Pumpkins, we had Jewel, you know, we had The End is the Beginning is the End by Smashing Pumpkins, we had... Foolish Games by Jewel, you know, we got Gotham City, um, I'm not going to name the artist of that, um, so yeah, the soundtrack was really good, it's just, I feel the cast for the movie, you know, George Clooney as Batman, like, he did okay, it was, it was more, see, I've had, I've had other friends that say, when they started using really famous actors, it ruined the movie, and that's, that, that's not true. Um, I don't, it wasn't the actors that made the movie bad. It was just the storyline and, and it was just, you know, I feel like in a lot of movies, you know, the last one, they feel like they, they just want to rush because, you know, and, 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 you know, like when you've done like a four film trilogy and like, yeah, they've, they've done really well, but also by that time, you know, you're tired. You don't want to just do Batman. You want to do other stuff. Um, me personally, I would do Batman movies for 50 years because, you know, Batman's my hero, my favorite superhero. But, um, I mainly feel that, you know, it was a rushed movie, um, and, you know, they kind of just started running out of ideas because the first one, Batman, was the Joker. The second one, Batman Returns, was the Penguin and Catwoman. Third one was... Two Face and the Riddler, and of course, Mister Freeze is a is a famous villain. He's one of the OG villains. Same with Poison Ivy, but I feel in this movie they had already done so much, and they they didn't have the creative ideas, you know, because Tim Burton did the first two, which were phenomenal, and then the third one they ended up, you know, parting ways. I'm not going to get into that. But um, this movie is just Joel Schumacher. It's no Tim Burton. And I feel that's why it didn't do as good as the first three did. Because Tim Burton's creative creative activity wasn't, you know, his creativeness wasn't a part of it. And I personally feel Tim Burton did excellent. I mean, Batman, you know, was phenomenal. It was excellent. It was a great DC Comics, you know movie and I feel like if you watch Batman and Batman Returns you see how good those movies were and then you watch Batman Forever and you go yeah this is okay like it's 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 not bad but then you watch Batman and Robin and you just go this movie's just terrible and it's I mean you know everybody has their own opinions and I you know I'm not gonna say like they're wrong um, because that's not who I am. I'm not going to just say, I hate to tell you you're wrong. This movie's terrible. Or I hate to tell you, but this movie is good. And you're stupid for saying it's bad. I don't do that. You know, I'm open to anyone's opinion. Um, but me personally, I feel like this movie was really rushed. And they could have done a lot better if they had waited maybe another year or two. Because I think they could have used a lot you know, better. But of course, you know, we don't know what, you know, Warner Brothers could have said, you know, we need another Batman. You know, I don't know what could have happened um, during that time. Of course, I wasn't around. I was born in 98. This movie came out in 97. So I, you know, I don't have the nostalgia as much as someone that was born in like the 80s or early 90s. But, um, me personally, I think Chris O'Donnell is the best Robin. Um, I don't, I do like how they did the costume more like Nightwing. You know, they wanted it because, you know, he's kind of, for the movie, he's got, sorry, my watch is pinging. 
um you know he's got like so nightwing is the original robin dick grayson and you know they've had like in the animated series and like other things they've had like the fallout with him and batman but you know it, it the beauty of this movie is they have that like he's kind of wanting to do things on his own and he feels that like batman doesn't trust him batman won't let him do what he wants and as the movie goes you know robin also realizes the mistakes that he that he does and that's that's the beauty of this movie is they still show that they show that you know he's young he wants to get out and do something he wants to be his own man and it shows that batman respects it but at the same time batman's like look if you do it this way you're gonna get yourself killed um, of course, towards the end of the movie, Batman realizes it's all about trust, and he has to realize that everyone has to be their own person, and he finally begins to trust Robin towards the end, and I'm not going to spoil it because I don't know who's seen it and who hasn't, but, you know, it's it's still a good movie because it does show, like, teamwork and... You know, in this one, Alfred's dying, and in this version, they have Barbara, you know, Barbara Gordon, Commissioner Gordon's daughter, becomes Batgirl. In this version, she's related to Alfred. And so Alfred's dying and sick, and she feels like Alfred never lived his life. He never did the things that he wanted to do. He was more focused on helping Bruce. And so that that that's the main focus, too, at least for Batgirl. And I feel, you know, looking back on it, it really was kind of cheesy how they did all this stuff when they could have, they they could have made it, you know, they could have made it a little bit better than they could have. But, you know, at the same time, you know, there's only so much you can do in a Batman movie. And, like, if they wanted to do everything, we could have... You know, we don't know. It could have been a four-hour Batman movie. Like, you know, the newer one. The Batman with Robert Patterson. Pattinson, you know. That was like an almost three-hour long Batman movie. And it dragged, you know. And so what people don't understand is, yeah, a three-hour Batman movie would be awesome. You're like, oh my gosh, it's a three-hour Batman movie. That's got to be action-packed, you know. Romance, whatever. But what people don't understand is if it's a three-hour long movie, it drags. It's always going to drag. I'm not saying like long movies like that are all boring, but there's times in it where it gets, it drags and you're just like, oh my God, when is this movie going to end? And that's how I felt with um, the new, the Batman. Do I think it's a bad movie? No, it was a good movie, but it just, you know, there was almost, there was, there's always so much you can do in a Batman movie. And most people know his origin story, you know, his parents were killed, he wanted revenge, and so he becomes Batman because he do he wants to prevent that from happening to anybody. And, you know, there's only so much you can do in a Batman movie. And, you know, after these movies, um, they canceled another sequel because of how bad this this movie did. And then they decided to reboot it and do the Christopher Nolan, the Dark Knight trilogy. And me personally, I choose the 90s Batman movies because they, you know, the music, the action, it was a little bit. I mean, of course, the Dark Knight trilogy is a little bit darker, which was a good version of Batman. Um, I do feel that they did a good version of Batman. Um. I do feel those movies do drag a little bit. Um, there's times where it just got boring. But I mean, The Dark Knight will always be one of the best Batman movies. Um, in my personal opinion, the best Batman movie is Batman 1989. Jack Nicholson did a phenomenal job as the Joker. They based it off of, you know, the funny Joker. You know, he's a, he's a psychopath. He's a, you know, he... You know, he he does things, but he they made him like the Joker, laughable, playable. And they also did his origin, you know, the correct way. I mean, there's so many different versions of, you know, the Joker's origin. 
And I know I'm going, you know, off, you know, I'm not just talking about Batman and Robin, but bear with me. So the most known version of the Joker's origin is, and of course they don't follow it, but he was the original, he was one of the Red Hoods and he was on a heist and Batman was chasing him. He trips, he falls, falls in a tank of acid, gets his skin bleached, his hair dyed green and becomes a psychopath. That is one of the original origin. That is considered, I think, the origin story. I could be wrong, but I'm Batman. I'm a Batman knowledge expert. Um, and so I like how Tim Burton based it off of that. And he also based off a little bit of other things um, from The Killing Joke, um, which is one of the best Batman graphic novels of all time. But, you know, like... The Joker's origin for um, Killing Joke is he falls in, he was already a little bit off, and, you know, he's this comedian, and he sucks. He's got a wife that's pregnant, he's trying to provide, and he feels like a failure. And he's kind of a little bit off, and then his wife ends up dying, and his unborn child dies, and he kind of is kind of starting to come out, at, you know, and start to become crazy. He becomes the red and he becomes the red hood in that version to make money to provide for his family. And so his wife ends up dying, he becomes the red hood and then, you know, the heist happens. And then, you know, he becomes the Joker and that adds on to his psychic, you know, he becomes psycho and he becomes the Joker. And I do like that version, but I don't I don't like how it, it, it it's good. I'm just going to say that. This is my first YouTube video, so I'm going to kind of, you know, be a little bit off. So I apologize for that. But, you know, there's so many different versions of Batman that people have done that, like, take Batman Beyond, for example. Phenomenal series. And, of course, there's comic books now and everything. Um, Batman Beyond, um, I know I'm, you know getting off the topic of Batman and Robin, but Batman Beyond was unique because it was a different Batman. It's Terry McGinnis, and he does things a little bit differently than the original Bruce Wayne Batman did. And I feel that was perfect for the time because when they were coming out with that TV show on Kids WB, I mean, I remember being two years old and watching Batman Beyond, Return of the Joker, all that jazz, because... And it was cool to me because it was a completely different Batman. It was a different Batman and it was in a different, I mean, it was kind of the same origin, you know, his father gets killed, but he does things differently than Batman. And it was just a phenomenal series. Um, so I highly recommend Batman Beyond. Um, you can buy it on DVD. You could watch it on streaming on, um, HBO Max, you can buy it on Apple TV, you can buy it on Amazon Prime, and I highly recommend that series. But back to Batman and Robin, I do love the costumes, the Batmobile, it was awesome. It wasn't as good as um, the Batman Forever Batmobile. Um, I think the bat suits were cool. I think the music was great. I mean, the music, the music, like the soundtrack was just great. Um, you know, and it, you know, the action was good there, you know, Mr. Freeze's ice puns, you know, we'll never forget those, you know, like what killed the dinosaurs, the ice age or everybody chill or the ice man come if, you know, people still quote that, you know, every now and then, at least I do. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like, you know, Batman and Robin isn't a bad, bad movie. It just... It just wasn't as good as the first three. But, you know, I, I, I recommend to you all to rewatch it and understand that it is a good Batman movie. It is a good movie. It's not a bad movie. It's just not as great as it could have been. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this video. I've been talking for 20 minutes. Um, this is my first YouTube video, so I don't expect it, you know, to be that great, but maybe in five years, if I have a, like a serious YouTube channel by then, 
I can make a, you know, a remake to this video or like me five years later, you know, or like a, or like a, I watch this video and comment, commentate on it or comment on it. But yeah, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Please comment and let me know what other superhero movies or Disney or whatever movies you want me to commentate on and I'll give my opinions on it. Um, until then, have a good day.